Hi beauty fam, welcome back to Mickey Car Beauty. I'm Mickey and better late than never. Um, I am finally doing my best of my faves of 2022 makeup and skincare and tools and it's very late. I'm at the end of February, but better late than never. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. If this is your first time on my channel, welcome to Mickey Car Beauty. On my channel, I love to talk about luxury skincare and beauty. And today I'm going, I'm gonna run through in no particular order my faves of 2022. But before we continue, please consider subscribing to my channel, subscribe to below. Uh, we'll start with my favorite tool of last year. And it was definitely the Sony G Niji Pro. Look how beautiful that is. This has definitely been my workhorse bronzer. I use this almost every day and it's just so soft. I finally found the bronzing brush that's for me. Um, I would love to get the travel version of this um, if it's still around, but I'm perfectly happy with this. I use this every day and it's definitely my favorite brush that I bought all of last year. Moving on to skincare. This will be fast too. These are, um, I definitely have other skincare favorites, but these are ones that I discovered last year that I'm loving. So these are new to me. So definitely the Skin Fix Barrier Plus Cream. This product here, Skin Fix Barrier Plus, the Triple Lipid Peptide Cream. And this is if you have a compromise layer on your skin. So I have aging skin, but eczema and rosacea, which you can't see because I have a lot of makeup on, but I have aging skin, rosacea and eczema. And the only thing that has helped me is kind of paying attention to my lipid layer. And what helped me before was actually using Sisley, the nourishing cream, but that is so press bendy that I've been always looking for a dupe, a close dupe that is a, definitely more affordable. So. You can get this at Sephora and the price is below and I love this so much that during the Sephora sale I stock up. You push this here and it just squeezes out the right amount for you to use for your face and then you just go ahead and swipe that up. Um, I will wipe that down like once or twice a week so it doesn't build up in gunk and bacteria but it's just like the perfect lotion. I would say if you have eczema I definitely use it on my patches as well. They um, actually have you can see I have eczema patches there. They actually have an eczema hand cream, but I actually use this anywhere I'm having rough patches and it's definitely helped with my skin barrier. So Skin Fix is like my everyday holy grail facial cream that I've been loving this past year. I've also been using the Common Air Credo Beauty Vitamin C and I've been told before not to use vitamin C because I have rosacea. And I went out on a limb just to try this. It's supposed to be really sensitive, like good for sensitive skin. And I actually use, uh, that's how it comes. And it comes little, you want to keep these in the dark uh, to, for, to keep, keep it from compromising. And what you do is twist off the top. And then this is actually compostable and biodegradable. I have found that I used to use it during the day, but it would it was almost too slick for my face. So I started using half of that little capsule and then I've been using it at night. So that way it can actually sit on my face for a longer period of time. The only thing when you're the only thing when you're using vitamin C is you have to remember to use SPF. So I use SPF anyway. So these two have been so great of my skincare routine. So I wanted to share that those with you. Okay, so that's it for skincare. I'm going to move on to primer and I only have two and I forget if I had this as my favorites from last year, but I'm still using this. Um, I have the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer and this is kind of like my more affordable dupe for the Sisley Double Tensor. And this is Double Tensor. This is my, my favorite like high end high, super high end uh, primer, but it's just not sustainable for me. So in terms of like a dupe, um, I've been using this Milk Makeup Grip Primer. So this primer is great if you want more of like a dewy, healthy glow. But if you're using already a dewy foundation, I wouldn't recommend using this. Um, if you wanted more of a kind of a matte silky finish, I've been loving this Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas uh, Primer. And it's not new, but it's more new to me, but I've been definitely loving those two products. There were no concealers I liked last year, so I'm not going to even have that category. I'm not going to even make it up because there were just none that really were standout products for me. My 
most favorite foundation of last year if I were to rank them it was definitely the NARS light reflecting foundation and I use the color Vanuatu this is definitely more of my winter shade this is such a glorious natural glow foundation this I'm sure has made a lot of people's 2022 favorites I actually haven't watched anyone's 22 2022 favorites because I knew I was going to eventually do my video and I don't want to be biased but um I'd be really surprised if this didn't make a lot of people's lists I Thing. it's such a great um, affordable high-end foundation it's not be this not ridiculously expensive so I think it's not only the best foundation that I tried last year it's actually just I think the color range is great uh, what they have because it's made by makeup artists and I just love it it's one of the few foundations in my stash here of foundations where actually throughout the day my skin does look better which is not very common so I'm loving that, the NARS foundation. I'm actually loving the Lisa Eldridge, um, what is it called? The Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Foundation. Now she, her launch was fantastic. She came up with a huge range of shades and she paid attention to undertones. And what she did, which is a little bit more newer in the market, is that when you buy her products by a certain amount, you can get actually a foundation card of four shades in her range based on light light medium medium and so forth and you can get um, samples of four different foundations and I just thought that was brilliant you can actually go on her website and say um, I think they used to you could just outright buy them so I just think it's a great idea of in terms of um, trying out a foundation without buying the entire foundation first which is brilliant because how many of us have actually bought full price foundations and either the color didn't work for you or the or the formula and I just she's kind of setting the bar now of how uh, customer service and foundations should be so been loving this I'm actually wearing it today it's a little bit too light for me so I had to bronze it up but that's not a problem new to me but not new to the market is the Surratt Dew Drop Foundation I've been using this a whole bunch this is in shade 7 and I really love it. I didn't get what the skin tint uh, fad was, but this is probably my favorite skin tint. I actually traveled with this uh, when I went on vacation. It just looks makes my skin look natural but better, and it's very thin, so it almost feels like skincare. So I love this. If you can find your shade match, I would highly recommend the Surratt Dew Drop, Dew Drop, Dew Drop Foundation. Uh, the mechanism isn't a big deal for me. It just, you have to shake it and then pump it out. Some people don't like it, but I actually found that it was fine for me. Um, also new to me, but not new on the market, is the Dior Backstage Foundation. There were rumors that this might be discontinued or reformulated, so I've been, this has been on my wish list for a while. So I went ahead and bought 3WO, 3 Warm Olive, which is my color for Dior. And I love it. I it, I can see why a lot of people use this for a professional like stage makeup or events. That my it's a bit like a thin full coverage foundation. It doesn't look cakey. The formula is really nice in that it doesn't look like you're wearing makeup, but it makes your skin look flawless. A lot of people use this for weddings as well. So I can see why this is kind of like an event foundation. Um, it doesn't budge. So I definitely would wear this for a special event. This is beautiful. I definitely recommend that. Another one that came out last year is the Chanel Le Beige's Complexion Touch. Now this was kind of um, on the fence for me, like whether I liked it. And what I was doing, I was comparing it to what I considered the original, which is the Water Fresh Tint here. I'm going to have to take it out. Um, and I love this for summer. This is such an easy foundation. And it's more pigmented than that water fresh, uh, water fresh tint. What I, how I love to use this is actually spot treatment. And I love it using it in the front of my face because I have a lot of redness sometimes, depending on if I'm having a breakout or reaction. I just love to use this as a spot treatment because it's so thin, water-based, and buildable. And it just is so pigmented that it does the job really well. And I use the color B40. Okay, another foundation that I really love this foundation this year is the Suku Liquid Foundation. So the Suku Liquid Foundation came out in early of 2022. And I love Suku, the cream foundation, but I just love this mechanism more. The jar that the cream foundation comes in is a little messy. Um, it's a bit thinner of a foundation and more moisturizing. It reminds me of the Chanel Sublimage uh, kind of like skincare foundation, but this is more 
like a dewy luminous foundation but not too dewy that you look oily and so it's just a beautiful foundation i use the color 35 and that's kind of like my perfect color in suku so i would highly recommend this if you're interested in kind of asian japanese technology my two favorite highlighter products from last year are the lisa eldridge seamless skin um elevated glow in solar light i love this product it's really interesting in that there's no smell just some technology where things tighten and it's like this beautiful lit with from within kind of glow i'm actually going to put some here so you can see and it's kind of like kind of like a nice apricot sheen you can't put this all over your face that was the downside it's not exactly like the charlotte Til tilbury product it's only meant to be on certain parts but oh she's such a beautiful product and it kind of tightens this area too, which I'm not mad about. I'm also loving the Suku um, highlighter. And this is the first time they came out with highlighter in the melting powder formula. And unfortunately, they are discontinuing that formula because of raw material issues. So I picked this up when it came out, I think last summer. And it's just this beautiful, just, I mean, the marbling is like, reminds me of Hourglass, but it's better than Hourglass. So it's that color. It's marbled, but it's just this um, silky and moisturizing product. It's just so beautiful. I love that. So this is limited edition. I will be coveting this product for years to come. And the last, this is like a two for one. I love this as a highlighter, but more as a one and done. So the Chantecai Sunbeam Cheek and eye shade. It's this product right here. I'm going to swatch it for you. How beautiful that is. I enjoy this more as a one and done on my eyes. You can see it's a little bit too deep, even for me. Um, so it's meant to be like, they said you could use it for highlight, which I'm doing now on top of this highlight here. I don't prefer it. I think it's a little bit too, well, I can see if it's, I'm tan, it's nice, but it's just, it has too much of a pigment. So I didn't care for it that much. What it looks beautiful more on is actually my eyes. So I love using that as a one and done. That became my go-to in the summer as a one and done. Um, going back to the foundations, this also was released last year and it was kind of like one of those breakthrough products. And it's the Danessa Myricks blurring balm powder and I know a lot of people didn't like this and I actually did not like it at first I actually almost returned it and I realized you know with when you're testing makeup and things are new this is like a brand new product on the market with a new technology I was like just hold on maybe just figure out how best to use it and I'm so glad I held on to it because I found um, not using the scoop worked well what happened is that I was putting too much product using the scoop it didn't work well with a sponge. It didn't work well with scooping. It's best that for me, I use a stiff brush and stipple it on to the product and then onto my face. And I just love it. I love it as um, kind of like a really natural foundation that also kind of dampens any redness or any oiliness, but still looks natural. It doesn't look like a matte powder. I've used this as a primer. I've used this as my foundation. I've also used this as um like a finishing powder so i'm gonna actually show you how i've used it i just have taken a kind of a stiff brush this is the bk beauty 101 brush and then what i'll do is i'll just kind of put this over my areas to just tamp down oils and it doesn't have a scent which is really nice i really enjoy it and i often will use this when i'm in a hurry and i don't want to put foundation on it's like no foundation foundation product if you will but i love that product so that was definitely a favorite of mine from last year okay so i'm gonna move over to the singles because i showed you one of my favorite singles which was that sunbeam ray from chantakai i also loved this new single that i picked up and this is from phytosurgeons it's the color deeply rooted and it looks pretty plain in the pan but it's such a unique color it's got like one or two or three colors in there. It's got brown, a little bit of blue in there. 
and a little bit of purple. Can you see that? And this is a beautiful one on done. It's like a like a smoky color. It became one of those kind of cult kind of indie colors from last year, but I've seen this on so many different people and it's just beautiful. I love this. This is my favorite product from Phytosurgeons. Also on uh, my favorites for like singles one on done for eyes are the Lisa Eldridge Liquid Lurixes. I think I have almost all of them except for maybe two, but I picked out my four favorite and it just happens to be, of course, the cool, the cool tone shades. And I have found that I really love these um, either just by itself or in with like a matte color or combining the two. So I really love these four shades, Cressida, Bianca, Angelica, and Zora. I love all these colors. This, these two together are just, it's just like a party. It's like a fun party of pastels. Just, I'm such a fan of these liquid lurixes. Why don't we talk about blush? So this is new to me, but not new on the market. I finally got my hands on the Dior blush. So here's, here's the thing. This is the Dior Backstage Blush Rosy Glow in Coral. Don't go by this color because that's just the picture. You need to open it so you see the actual color. So you can see the core, the color for the packaging, the marketing is not the same color as the inside. So you need to open it to see how beautiful that is. So I am such a lover of coral blushes that this is like one of my favorite corals. It's so pretty. And there's almost like a luminosity to it, I'll show you. So pretty. Okay, so that's new to me, one of my favorites from last year. Um, no surprise that my favorite hands down formula for blushes out of all my entire blush collection is the Suku Melting Powder Blush uh, formula. And unfortunately, they just announced this week <clears throat> that they are discontinuing this formula, which makes me so sad because I got these last summer and these were my first two of the melting powder blush formula. And after I tried these two, I'm like, oh my God, I have to get all of them. And it's been on my wish list to like, you know, pace myself to get these because they are a little spendy. So um, I'm going to swatch these for you as well. Coral and then pink. And there's just a luminosity to it as well that it doesn't bring out texture. It's some moisturizing oil that's in there, but unfortunately they're having raw material sourcing issues. So they have to discontinue this. But these are my two favorite. Number two and three. Zero two is Haru Oto, which is the pink. This one. And then zero three, Koi Meguri Coral. And let me swatch the coral one next to the other coral so you can see. Very similar. This one's a little more vibrant, but there's a luminosity in that that is just so pretty. And that is the pink. So if you've been interested in getting the melting powder blushes. I would not sleep on that. Okay, so towards the end of the year, this was a surprise for me. I am not a huge Gucci beauty fan. I love Gucci as a product for bags and whatnot in fashion. Um, I tried, what did I try? I tried their bronzer, maybe their powder, and their foundation did not get good reviews. I've tried the Gucci, I've tried the Gucci satin and matte lipsticks. I don't like them because they're too dry. Um, they compete to me with Lisa Eldridge lipsticks and they have perfume. So here's the downside of this product, but I love it. I have the, I love these Gucci blushes. This is like my number one favorite, um, product from the Gucci line are these blushes. Look at this packaging. It's so beautiful and packaging is not enough for me. Yes. The packaging is beautiful, but the formula of these blushes are fantastic. I know that not everybody liked these, but I'm a person that like, likes this kind of particular formula where, um, again, this is the bright coral <laughs> of a type. The coral, it has like a luminosity again. So I definitely have a type. And it's more of a pink coral, not as orange as these other ones. It's more of like a melon cantaloupe, and this is like a pink coral. Um, these do have a little bit of a smell of perfume, but it, do it does go away. And it doesn't bother me as much. I love the color rosy beige. That was like the one I went hard on. And I got warm berry for winter. And I've been loving this for winter because it's just, I just put it back here. It looks so, so pretty. But in terms of like a nude kind of everyday rose color, that warm beige is so pretty. Let me do the warm berry for you. So pretty. 
So those are all the blushes I would recommend and my favorites from last year. Okay, moving on to eyeliners. This is my favorite liquid liner of my brown one. I use this Suku one almost every day. I would say every day. It's actually a nice brown and sometimes black is just too harsh, but I've been using liquid liner for years, so I'm pretty adept at using liquid liners. And this is a calligraphy pen, so I don't think this is like a beginner <laughs> tilt tip, but um, I've taught myself calligraphy and I've been doing liquid liner for years. I just love this mechanism. I love the color of Surratt. And then probably this year, I'll be picking up the blue liquid liner and the purple from here. So that's my favorite liquid liner from last year. And in terms of pencils, like Chanel still reigns supreme for me. The St Stilo Ye Waterproof ones. I These are just my favorite. I probably use Bruna Agape the most frequently. That color. Um, love these. But I did discover the Sisley liners this year. And I really like them. I find that these are less dry than the Chanel liners. And they're a little bit more gel-like. But the problem with gel is that sometimes with gel formulas, it can um, cause running for people with hooded eyelids or oily lids. These did, these do not run. So these are a little bit like less dry than um, the Chanel and a little bit more pigmented if you can see. And my favorite by far is, my favorite color from what I picked up last year is the sparkling blue. It's such a fun color. Let me swatch that for you. It's such a vibrant blue, so nice. And they have um, a purple, which I love. It's the Mystic Purple, that was sparkling blue. Mystic Purple, they just they just have such great colors. And I have one more I can't find. Um, they also come in a matte color, which I can't find at the moment. So you just gotta trust me. I've just been loving these liners. They're fantastic. Oh, here it is, here's the matte. So I'm not all sparkles. So this is like a matte chestnut. So you can see it's like much more pigmented than the Chanel. You know, they are more expensive than Chanel, but I think they might be giving a run for Chanel's money in, in terms of quality. So my last favorite uh, eyeliner from last year is this Gucci pencil. And it's mostly because of the color. It's the color Amethyst 05. And it's like this bright purple. Look at that. So I definitely use it. I have a lot of purple eyeshadow I have in my makeup arsenal so I definitely use a lot of purple so that's like my go-to. I'm gonna move along to bronzers. It was really hard for me to pick my favorite one but I went I went ahead and did it and I'll show you my runner up runners ups. So my favorite formula for bronzers is still the Victoria um, Beckham matte bronzing brick and I love this product so much that I actually um, have it in 03 and 04. So this is 03 and the side in 04. As I got warmer, I realized this one was too light for me, but in the winter, this is great. It's definitely more of a subtle, uh, more of a subtle bronzer matte. And then this is a contour and the bronzer. I love this product. Packaging is just divine, but moreover, regardless of the product, um, regardless of the packaging, this is like my favorite matte bronzer. The Victoria Beckham um, bronzer is like my favorite product out of her entire line. Okay, in terms of um, creamy, creamy bronzers, I would have to say the Charlotte Tilbury. When she came out with this Sunkiss Glow Bronzer, this is in the color tan. I just, it's, here, here's the thing. I think this is too big. <laughs> this is way too big. I use this mirror a lot, but I don't know if I'll ever get through it, but I appreciate that um, it's so huge. So that's also one of my favorites. I also enjoyed the Makeup by Mario, the Soft Sculpt in the color medium. I use that a lot this summer, just like to keep, keep a, like a healthy bronzy glow. And in terms of like a glowy bronzer, I really loved the Chanel Sun Bath Deep. God, I love this. It has some perfume, but I tolerated it just cause it's such a beautiful glowy bronzer. And it's actually not really a bronzer, it's actually a powder. So if you're a deeper skin beauty, you can actually use this as your powder and there's like a luminosity to it. It's just so glorious. Uh, my favorite contour powder is actually still the Kevin Aquan and I have that in the color deep and it's just like the perfect, like perfect, perfect contour color. It's not too warm. So it's like a little bit of gray if you can see. 
And then I also love this contour stick I use a lot. This is my favorite cream contour. So I really am enjoying that Westman Atelier truffle. Yeah, truffle color. I love a lot of bronzers and contours, so that was hard for me to pin down. Okay, so I'm gonna go start going faster because I have a lot um, I'm trying to get through. I didn't have any favorite powders, so I skipped that category. Um, my favorite lip glosses are still the Lisa Eldridge, and my favorite, I just did a video, blush, um, this is a fair and then muse. I grab a fair a lot so much that I think this is like my second one. This is a second repurchase. I can tell, yeah, it's actually the lightest. So my favorite gloss out of all these, all of my glosses in my collection is the Affair Gloss by Lisa Eldridge. And I'll show it to you here. So beautiful. And then my favorite lip oils from last year are the Merit Lip Oils. Um, Merit Lip Oils in the color Marrakesh which is the orange one and then pink feet. And I'll show you, oranges tend to look better on me. So um, I'll show you the Marrakesh. So pretty, I love that. Uh, if you don't like gloss, you need like a thinner formula, um, lip oils are the way to go. And then I'm gonna move to lipsticks. Okay, so my favorite lipsticks, oh, this is so hard. Hermes Rose Spice 21. I grabbed that a lot last year and that was kind of like, Pinky Nude, one of my favorites. Um, I also love Chanel Coco Bloom in Radiant. It's a beautiful emollient berry. Love that color. And then I grabbed a lot of these. I got a lot of Chanel last year, but the ones I've been grabbing the most are um, Alter Ego in 209. I'm gonna do a swatch over here because I'm running out of space. Alter Ego, I love that. It's like the perfect winter brown. And I grabbed In Attend You a lot, 199. Very similar, this is more um, purple, this is more brown, muted brown. Also Sorcery from last year. Love Lisa Eldridge. And then um, Cinnabar was also up there in terms of my favorite lipsticks from last year. On to my favorite of eyeshadows. Okay, so we'll start with the smaller quads and I'll show them to you, but I'm not gonna swatch them. My favorite um, smaller quince, Chanel Intensité. I loved this quad, um, 58 Intensité. I can use this during for work and daytime. It was such a versatile palette color story for me. I loved it. In terms of a unique color story for me, Dior Blue Velvet. Loved this color story. I did a lot of Instagram looks with that. My favorite unique um, quad from Suku was this one. I've never had a color story of this. This is like sea glass. So I love teals and I loved the colors of this Suku 114 Sumi Midori. I also loved the Guerlain release, Mystic Peacock. I did a couple looks of this. I just love these two blues, the bright vibrant blue, this peachy pink, and then this teal blue. So beautiful. It's giving Tom Ford quads a run for their money. Not as great as that formula, but it's pretty close. I also love the Lisa Eldridge Sorcery palette. I just love every single color in here. All the looks I did of this, I ended up doing three or four looks on my Instagram and YouTube. Um, such a unique color story, such a beautiful formula. The multi-chromes on here are just next level. So beautiful. And that, that still might be sold out. Okay, so I have two Tom Ford quads that I really, really love from last year. The Violet Satinée and then Metal Lust. I know that you can still find the Violet Satinée. Beautiful, I did so many colors. I love purples. That was just like a standout winner for me for the formula. And this is like the smoky, grungy um, Metal Lust that apparently you can't find. So um, I use that so much I actually had to hide it for myself because it's... As far as I know, it's not been re-released. So I this might be it, like the last of the, like similar to the Coco Mirage, um, the original, it, this might be it. So um, yeah, I don't use that as much because it might, might disappear one day as it is. Actually, it's disappeared now, you can't get it. And then we're on to the big palettes. Okay, you ready? Okay, so my favorite big palettes, um, and this is controversial because I know a lot of people didn't like this, the Flora Kalahari by Byredo. I loved this palette. 
these colors are my jam some of them said some people said these were dusty but I didn't mind I did so many looks with this I just love this color story it's not for everybody I think if you're someone with a medium to medium tan skin tone this is gonna be a color story for you so I just loved that loved that I love that so hard the Patrick Tra major dimensions for me this was like um the Pat McGrath mothership palette the rose the first rose palette was a disappointment for me for some reason those tones look really ashy on me so this was kind of like what I wanted from her rose divine rose color story so this is beautiful I don't like these um, cream products but everything else is gorgeous so Patrick Ta major dimensions 2 palette um, and then of course I can't open this the the debut Isamea French industrial palette loved this color story I love greens and I love grungy glam looks I did a couple looks with that that was definitely my favorites of last year and then the mothership 10 I wasn't going to get this and then it's just the perfect like cool neutral palette from Pat McGrath and so wearable I love it every look that I've had has that been gorgeous is it, beauty so fam really quick I talked really fast but I try to get through all those products those are my favorites from 2022 beauty and skincare and tools um, let me know if you have some favorites in there or there were some that I picked that you were like no I didn't like that that's fine too but for me I loved all those beauty subjective whatever works for you it works for you just because I didn't pick it or just because I like it doesn't mean anything wrong with you those are just the beauty uh, picks and skincare picks that I that worked best for me last year and I still love them so if you found some favorites in there I'd love to hear um, did I miss any let me know below um, comment and consider subscribing here and clicking the notification button for all if you so are inclined um, would love if you comment and like below it helps out my channel and as always please be very kind to yourself and others and just be you until the next video beauty fam take good care bye